So the five things that you want to make a reality, um, five steps that you need to take to make your dreams a reality. So I want to welcome you all to Masterful Life this morning. Um, I tried to hook up the podcast, but it doesn't seem to be working. So I'll have to save this for there later. Hi, Darlene. Um, hi, Tammy. Love seeing you guys. Love that everyone is here. It's 8 a.m. on a Monday morning, and we're going to do this every Monday. I had to take a break for a while. I had to take a little bit of a break because I was just working on I'm working on a huge project and uh, I needed some time to focus on that project and I was feeling a little bit spread thin. So let's talk, start talking about those five steps right now. So five steps to make our dreams a reality. The first step, and I know that you guys are going to know this, okay? We all know things. Knowing something, knowing something and doing something about it are two different things. Okay. We all know a lot of things and you may have heard me use the analogy of the car before. Like, you know, we all have gas in the car, but if we don't actually get in the car and start driving it, then it doesn't matter how much gas we have in the car. Your tank could be full or empty. It won't matter if you don't actually get up, get in the car and drive. So taking action in the things that I'm going to tell you right now is super important, right? Taking action is probably one of the most important things that you have to do. So I hope everybody can hear me really clearly. Um, so let's get started. The first one is clarity. Okay. We need, you need to know what you want. Sounds simple, right? But a lot of people don't focus. You don't sit down. You don't actually write about it. You don't tell yourself what do you, what you want. What you're doing is being really vague about it. And it's like you're trying to put an arrow in a really blurry target that just keeps moving around, right? So if that target keeps moving around, you're not going to be able to get to it. You're not going to be able to get what you want. You need to be clear about what you want. Okay. So maybe one of the exercises that you guys can, that you, the, the viewers, people that are listening to me can do is sort of sit down today and think about what do I want and try to be specific and don't be afraid to ask and write down what you want. Some people do not write down what they want because they think that they're asking for too much. You know, we keep talking about abundance, right? This abundant universe. Well, if it's so abundant, then you should be able to ask for whatever you want. Okay. And I'm going to say also, good morning, Pat. Maybe don't focus on, I want a million dollars. Like, let's not focus so much on the energy of money. Money is always a great outcome to the things that you want. You know, that's a nice outcome. But what are you doing for that outcome? I always think about, instead of asking for money, be willing to offer something. So for instance, I have a passion for serving others. I have, I am, I live to serve other people. It is my passion. It is something that I love. It is part of my dream. And all I think about is how I can make this dream bigger how I can reach more people. Money, that's an outcome. All right, that's just one of the outcomes. But what am I doing? What do I want, right? I want to serve people. I am passionate about serving others. I want to get to the people who really want to make change in their life. That's what I want. So, Wanting that money will be an outcome. It will just be a natural outcome of that. But so will that person reaching their potential. So will getting that person on their path. So will the reward I will feel because I've helped someone do that. Right? So there's a lot of outcomes that come from what I want. And 
I need you to sit down. I'm going to ask you to sit down and think about what is it that you want? Okay, what is it that you want? I'm using a new mic today, so hopefully you guys can all hear me really clearly. The other thing I'm going to say is, number two, so once you've written down kind of what you want, um, I'd like you to create, I know it sounds weird, but it, you know, it sounds like something that's really hokey, but a vision board is so important. Most of the most successful people in this world have a vision board. Good morning, Desiree, Pat, some of the most influential, successful, Coaches, mentors, leaders of this world have vision boards. So create a vision board. You know, I've seen lots of really great vision boards going up because people have been watching my vision board. My vision board was about just, you know what? I was just putting things up and I'm all over this wall. My vision board is actually a whole wall and in my house. Like I've just created this one wall that is my vision board. And I've seen other people's vision boards and they're really organized and neat and mine's not and really neat and stuff. And that's great. It's great to be that focused. I like to have everything everywhere. I want to see it. I want to look here and see something and look there, see something and look here, see something. And that's me. So however that vision board is, it's not right or wrong in any way. I think the challenge is if you don't do it. Right. And one of the things I've sort of taken to doing, if you guys have been watching my posts lately, is that I actually started, I put my rebounder, my trampoline, my little trampoline that I work out on. I put that right in front of my vision board. Now I moved it. And now instead of, you know, watching a video to work out, I just, I know what I'm going to do on my rebounder. So I just do it watching my vision board. And as I'm bouncing around, I'm like seeing this and seeing that and seeing the other thing. And why am I doing that? Because as I'm working out, um, my energy is lifting. My frequency is lifting. My vibration is lifting and rising, right? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling energetic. I'm smiling. I'm feeling good about what I'm doing. And I'm sending this great, like energy is all over my vision board. So that's just a little added piece that I like doing. So vision boarding, you know, if you've got a bunch of magazines in your house, use it. You know, there's a lot of online um, app vision boards as well. I prefer having the actual physical, taking my time and putting stuff up vision board. But if you don't have magazines and you know that it takes a lot of magazines, trust me, um, then just start with an app. You know, start with an app one or actually writing words, like writing words and quotes on paper, printing them out or writing them by hand, decorating them, putting those up on your board, right? If you can draw, if you're artistic, you know, you can make an amazing vision board without even ever having to use a magazine or anything. So there's lots of great ways to make a vision board. The only thing that's going to stand in your way is from actually getting started to make it. That's really it. And once you get it, once you start, you'll find hours go by as you start creating this thing. So allowing that to happen and just moving into that. So clarity, finding out what you want was this first step. And the second step is making a vision board. Okay. It keeps you really focused on what you want and you can want lots of things in lots of areas of your life. Okay. So, you know, maybe about relationship, you want some stuff about your career, you want some stuff, about being um, a parent, you want some things, you know, what, you know, whatever it is that you want, vacations you want to go on, sites that you want to see, things that you want to experience, all of these things go on your vision board, okay? The next thing you might wanna try is I am creating, I'm at 275 of 300. So I am making a 300 list. So I'm at 275 of 300 right now. I'm almost done. 300 things that I want. 300 things that are going to come into my life. 
But what I'm doing with this 300 list is I'm writing them out on a, in my, in a journal and I'm also putting like a checkbox be, be, at the beginning of the line. So I start the line with a square, a checkbox, and then I write what that thing is that I want so that when it happens, I can check it off. So it's like a to-do list of 300 things that you want. Okay. Don't be afraid to up your wants. You know, if you need a $250,000 buffer in your bank account, that's a want, right? And don't wish, you know, I wish I had this. No, I'm going to have a $250,000 buffer in my bank account. Okay. Energy will give you what you want. You need to be clear. I want a four by four Jeep. Red. Be clear about what you want. Okay. Clarity, focus, energy goes, energy, focus, energy flows where energy, wait a minute, wait a minute. Energy flows where focus goes, where focus goes, energy flows. <laughs> so make sure that you're focused on what you want. And we want things in different areas of our lives. So when you think about all the different areas of your life, the different roles that you play, yes, will 300, writing down 300 things be a challenge? After about 75, you're going to start to really stretch your thoughts, but it's worth it. I'm watching things happening in my life right now. I'm watching them because I'm asking for them because I'm saying this is what, this is what's going to happen. Okay. And it's happening. So you need to be clear about that. Number four, every morning, mostly every morning, I pick up my journal and I read my 300 list. So the, one of the first things I do is I get up, I pick up my journal and I read my 300 list. So even if I've only have a hundred things on there, I read those, you know, I scan through them, right? I read them. I go through the pages. I do it again before I go to bed. Okay. But every morning, one of the things that I do is I write down five things that I am actually grateful for that may have happened the next, the day before. So I write five things that I'm grateful for. And I write five things that are magnificent about me. My magnificent list, five things that are magnificent about me. It's magnificent that I am so empowered to help others. I think that that's magnificent. You know, I'm, I feel like I'm magnificent because I feel like you know, for 55, I'm kind of feeling pretty good about me, right? You know, I, that's magnificent about me. So there's things about myself that I feel are magnificent. We focus far too much on the things that we don't like about ourselves. We focus far too much on our flaws. We focus far too much on what we can't have. Remember, where your focus goes, energy flows. This is not a cliche. This is not something that you just, people just say. This is the truth. If you don't believe any other thing in your entire life, believe that. If you don't believe about spirituality, if you don't believe about anything, if you don't, if you're not religious, if you're not like, if you don't believe in a lot of things, if you're not holistically minded, it doesn't matter. If there is one thing in your life, believe that where your foot, where you are focused, that's what your reality is going to become. You do it all day long. People contact me all the time and they say, Aisha, can you teach me the law of attraction? I said, I feel like you're asking me to teach you how to breathe. You do it all day long. You do it all day. All you do is law of attraction. It is like breathing. So when, when I'm asked, you know, can you teach me the law of attraction? Can you teach me the secret? Can you teach me, you know, how to focus on what I want? My answer is always, you're already doing it. You do it all the time. You're never not doing it. Whenever you're thinking and you're focusing on negative things, you're doing it. Whenever you're talking about your flaws, you're doing it. Whenever you say you don't have enough, 
you're doing it, right? Whenever, whatever you think about yourself, whatever you think about your situation, whatever you believe to be true, congratulations, law of attraction. You're already doing it. You don't need to be taught this. You're already doing it. So you need to change your focus. Remember, we don't need a fuzzy target. We need to be clear. And that's why a vision board is good. And that's why sitting down and writing down things about what you want are good. That's why it's important to do that. Because you need to know what you're focusing on. And you need to believe that you can have it. Why can other people have it and you can't? There's no reason for that. The reason is where you're focusing. That's the reason. Okay, it's that simple. We try to complicate things. We wanna make things really hard for ourselves. It's not hard. What you're focusing on, you're getting. What you believe to be true is happening. Okay? What you think that you're not, you won't be. So you need to change your focus. Why are you magnificent? Five things every day that makes you, that make you magnificent. 300 things that you want and read them every day. Create that vision board. Make the clarity in your life. Because guess what happens in number five? We have a part of our brain that reticulates. Here's a word, reticulates. So I heard this word and now, this was a word I've never heard before. And now all of a sudden I heard this word about a month ago. There's a part of our brain and it's in charge of what we reticulate. And I'm gonna tell you what that means if you don't know what that means. Now I hear the word reticulate all over the place. So let's let's use this as an example. Let's say all of a sudden you're, you're, you're shopping for a car and you want a red four by four Jeep. You don't see them often, but you really want one. So you've gone and you've looked at a few or you keep, you've looked at a few pictures of a few. Guess what's going to happen? How many red 4x4 Jeeps do you think you're going to see? Right? All of a sudden, they're going to be like everywhere. Okay? Reticulation. Okay? So if you look at the things on your vision board, if you write the 300 list, if you focus on these things, you will begin to activate that reticulating part of your brain. And those things will start to show up for you. And why do you want that to happen? Because those are the signs. Those are the things that you need to take advantage of. And I'm gonna give you an example in a second of how this reticulation is changing my life right now, okay? So I'm hoping this stuff, folk, like you guys are getting this, right? I'd love to see some comments and tell me what you're thinking about what I'm saying to you right now, all right? So this, these are keys, right? We make things, I don't know what it is about human beings. I honestly don't know what it is about human beings, but we have this innate ability to make things awfully difficult for ourselves. You know, we love people even backwards. The things that we do, tonight we're, I'm doing a spiritual reading, not a reading, but a, like a book club. And we're reading out, out of a book called, uh, one of my favorites called The Mastery of Love. And we're gonna read a, a chapter or two in there. And when I read this book the first time, when I read this book the first time, I realized how ass backwards we love each other. <laughs> right? Like I put the book down going, wow, as a human race, we are, we just love to do things backwards. We just love it. I don't know why we love it. We just do. So those are the keys. I'm giving you five initial steps. Is this all you have to do? No. So these signs are going to start to show up for you and you have to take advantage of them. Okay, that is the next thing. When you start reticulating, when you start bringing in that part, when things start showing up from your vision board, from your 300 list, 
when things start showing up, like this, the next steps that you have to take, when the opportunities start showing themselves, if you don't take advantage of them, you have no one to blame but yourself, right? You have to do it. Oh, the book's name is The Mastery of Love. Thanks, Diana. So you must take advantage of it. And I'm going to tell you about a really cool example of this. Of Honestly, I am doing this right now. This is not just crap I'm spewing out of my mouth. I am actually doing this right now. So let's go over these five steps, okay? These five initial steps. And then I'm going to sh t share with you how I'm doing this in my life right now, okay? So the first step was clarity, writing down what you want, okay? Writing down what you want. Be clear. Stop fuzzy targeting things, okay? If you had an arrow and the target was moving and it was fuzzy, how are you going to hit the bullseye? Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, all the people that are coming in. So how are you going to hit that bullseye? It keeps moving. So you need to be clear, okay? Do your vision board, people. Do it, okay? You have time right now. Do it, okay? I have never been busier. I have never been busier. I am putting in 10 to 12 hour days on my dream right now because it's happening and with a passion, but I still made time for myself to do the vision board. So please don't tell me you don't have time. You do, okay? Even if you do a little bit every day, you still have time. Make your 300 list, 300 things. You do not have to sit down in one sitting and write down 300 things. That is not what I am asking you to do. I'm asking you to start. Start making that vision board. Make a checkbox, like a tick box, write down the first thing. Make a tick box, write down the next thing. Make a tick box, write down the next thing until you've got 300. Read those things every single day. Read it in the morning, read it at night. Not like a novel, okay? Just scan over it. Your subconscious knows what you read, what you wrote. Just go through the list. Read it every day, twice, okay? Don't write about it like, I wish I had this. I hope this thing comes into my life. Please stop wishing and hoping. That is so wishy-washy. I know those are such pretty words. Please don't wish and please don't hope, okay? Think about this like when you, and I use this example, when you get married. Will this ma woman or man take this person as, I wish I do. You don't say that, um, I hope I do. You don't say that. You say, I will, I am, I do. Commitment words, okay? So when you're making your 300 list, please be committed to your list. And don't be afraid that you're asking for too much. No one is judging you, okay? That energy, source, power, that thing that made us, that whatever you want to call it, I don't care about the name. It doesn't sit back and go, well, look at how greedy he's being. That never happens. It just doesn't happen. It's not a thing, okay? Ask for what you want. Ask for what you want. Um, your magnificent list and your gratitude list. Five things every morning that you're grateful for. Five things that are magnificent about you every single day. And you can find them. Listen, we always find what we're looking for. If you find your flaws, hell yeah, you're going to find them. You will. You will for sure you will find your flaws. Okay? If you, if you look for what is magnificent about you, you are going to find those things as well. What you look for, you will find. Start asking yourself, what are you looking for? Like, what are you looking for? Stop being so unkind to yourself. Seriously, what are you looking for? Look for the magnificence in yourself, even if it means, I like my teeth. I think they're magnificent. I think I'm very fortunate about my teeth. And I think that they're magnificent. I love the shape of my lips. I'm going to say that I feel like it's magnificent. Okay. I love that my hair is so healthy. I love the shape of my eyes. Okay. Are there things I am not thrilled with? I don't care. Yeah, but whatever. I want to focus on what I feel is magnificent about me. Okay. So that's what I want you to do. Focus on what is magnificent about you because there are 
a shit ton of things, I guarantee you. Okay? Stop picking yourself apart. And the last one, of course, is that reticulation, using that part of your brain. When you start focusing on your vision board, start focusing on your clarity, you're going to start bringing in the things that you've been looking at because it just happens. That's how we're wired. Okay. That is how we are wired. So starting to do that. All right. Now I'm going to share with you how this has been happening in my life. So I shared with you at the beginning <clears throat> how I really, really like my passion is serving people. I love people. Okay. I really, really do. I didn't one time, you know, there was a time in my life where I didn't even like myself. Okay. I loathed myself. So how could I love people? But you know, now I just, I love people and I know that part of my purpose and my path is to be a catalyst. And I know that I, I am here to empower others. You know, and I do it through my practice, through my private coaching. But I wanted to do something even bigger than that, right? So, you know, helping one to one, one person to one person is amazing. I love doing it because I can just sit there and focus on them. They are the one in my life at that moment. When I'm with a client, that person, they're the one. They are the most one and important thing to me in that moment. They are the one. Nothing else matters, okay? So I thought, how do I do this? How do I do this in something bigger? Okay. And that's what I started creating my vision board, writing down on my 300 list. Like, and I've always wanted a spiritual center. It was always something that I wanted. It was a, like a brick and mortar place, right? It was a place that I would go to and other teachers would come and they would teach people. And it was this brick and mortar place. And I dream about it and I envision it and I, and I, and I imagine it and I can tell you what the tiles look like and I can tell you what the trees beside the doors look like and I know what looks like outside the windows. Like, I I know this place. Then COVID hit and I thought, how am I ever going to have, like if we never go back to our normal or the, whatever the new normal is going to be, I don't know. How am I ever going to do this? You know, how am I going to do this? And this interesting thing about the brain, if we ask empowering questions, if we ask empowering questions, we will get empowering answers. So if I sat back and I went, why me? Why is, you know, now this has happened and how am I going to open up my, my, my spiritual center? Why is this happening? Right? So if I did that, it's a disempowering question and I'm going to get a disempowering answer. So. Instead, I'm like, how am I going to make this happen? How is this going to happen for me? And I went into my meditation, like I always do, just to walk the halls of my spiritual centers. It's just something that I do. And this time, I saw it like this. Thousands of people were meditating. Like they were on these golden colored mats and wearing white. And I wasn't expecting to see this. And there was like all these people on this field. And I'm like, what is this? Where, like, this is not where I was planning to go. And it was that weird. Like I was like, this is weird. This is not where I plan to go. And, and I could imagine myself and I, and I knew that I was standing behind a microphone and that I was talking to them. I, th I think it was a meditation. I couldn't hear what I was saying, but I just knew that people were kind of, nobody was sitting beside each other. When I think about it, like they were all distanced from each other. And I'm like, what is happening here? And then I kind of in my head, because I'm a claircognizant as well, I kind of hear messages and, and I heard that I should look right. So I turned my head right and there was this university. It was a campus. And I thought, a campus? The heck? How am I ever going to open up a campus? I couldn't even do the spiritual center. Like, I can't even see that happening. How am I going to do a campus? So I almost jumped out of the meditation. Anyways, I came out and I was kind of teary eyed. I was weepy and I was full of love and I was full of gratitude, but I was like, I, I honestly don't know how this is going to happen. I really don't know how this is going to happen. I can't imagine how I'm going to open up a university campus. I just don't know how I'm going to do it. And all of a sudden the signs started showing up and now I'm in the midst of opening up um, it's happening in the next 60 days to the public, but right now I'm looking for my founding faculty and I am creating an online global university campus. And it's all for self-healing and self-growth 
and, and to grow your business, to grow your personal growth, and to grow your relationships, and to learn te new techniques and strategies, and not just from me, but teachers all over the world. And I can't tell you, last Thursday I had seven interviews with teachers. Friday I had six. Saturday, one of my best friends, I think it's a best friend because she's just one of the most amazing people in my world right now and she is probably still watching here and that's Lisa Berry and I really, really wanted her as part of my team and she has agreed to be a part of the team. And Diana is watching and she's also on the faculty and, and I'm putting it out to you people. To the people who want to empower others, to the people who see their vision like mine, and really want to reach out to people in this world. For people, don't be alone on an island. My coaching business is amazing, but I'm alone there, working one-on-one -on -one with people. And I thought, what better way than creating a village where we could serve the community and like the global community and even, even having workshops in different languages. I just, I am blown away by the gift that I have been given because, sorry, because I've done the vision board, because I asked the right questions, because I, I made my 300 list, because I was clear about what I wanted, and because I activated that reticulating part of my brain to say, hey, now all the stuff is coming and I'm noticing the signs. I've done this, people. And I've only done, like, I've done this. I have done this and it's working. So it's not going to just work for me. And it's funny because the people that I'm reaching out to are saying, you know, I really wanted to be a part of something. I wanted to become part of a community like this. And now it's coming together for them. And we're going to become this huge, like, I'm telling you, my university, this university, this global community university that's all built around, it's going to be like a campus. Students, teachers, learning, growing. It's going to be amazing. And it's going to be huge. And I know that. There's just no other option. It's going to be huge. So the five steps that I'm sharing with you today, I do them. And right now I'm putting out to anybody who's got workshops, courses, certification courses, has the same vision as me. Right, Diana? Synchronicity, super excited. I am super excited. I feel blessed every single day. I put this together in two weeks. I am not a plan and sit down and mull it over and let's think about it for a while and what if this happens and think about the worst case scenarios. That is not me. I jump in. I'm just like, I am in. The signs are here. I'm not going to mess around with them. I'm just going. The opportunity showed up. I walked through the door. I'm not thinking about, am I going to walk through the door? I was just about to say, F yeah. Hell yeah. I am about to, I am going to walk through the door and I'm walking in and people are walking with me and I've met some of the best teachers and I just want to meet more. Because this place is coming alive in 60 days. My plan is mid-July, where we're opening it, opening it up. I already have some founding members. Students are already joining. I haven't even really put it out there yet. But I have meetings all week long with teachers and educators and people. Why? Because they have the same vision. They have the same vision. And I've created this wonderful interactive community where it's almost like, think about Facebook, but without all the noise, no ads, no sales, none of that, just learning, growing, but having all the interaction and the support, it's amazing. And I feel so blessed that this showed up for me and that I was smart enough, my eyes were open enough, I was focused enough to see it, to take this opportunity and run with it. So I want to thank you guys for watching my video this morning. I, like I said, I'm putting it out there. Those are the five steps I've given you guys. Clarity, vision board, uh, the 300 list, okay? Um, 
your gratitude and magnificence list every morning, okay? And to activate that reticulating part of your brain and then noticing the signs that show up for you because of what you've asked for and jumping on those opportunities. Good morning, Simone. Do it. Do this for yourself. You don't need to learn the law of attraction. You don't need to learn the law of intention. You already do it just like you breathe all day long. You just need to refocus. Refocus on what you want. Refocus on who you are. Refocus on your magnificence. Pay attention to the signs and you will have your dreams. Trust me. If you believe nothing else in this world, believe that. And I'll talk to you guys soon. And for you educators out there who are listening to this, reach out. If you have the same dream as me, if you share the same passion, if you live to serve others, if this is what you want, if this is what moves you, then I want to hear from you. I really want to hear from you. All right. So have a fantastic day, guys. I love you. You are awesome. I feel blessed to be here. And I will talk to you guys all soon. Bye. Bye-bye.